In our previous video, we described what XSLT is. In this video, we're going to implement it hands-on. So first of all, remember that an XSL sheet uh, is transforming XML from source XML to something else. That something else can be XML, HTML, or something completely unrelated. In our case, we want to take our existing XML document that we've seen uh, several times, just a moment, we'll scroll on over there and take a look at it. So this one called plants, and we want to style this up in an HTML format. So our XSL file will be that destination HTML format. We're going to do a, a fairly simple page. Now you can start this page in Notepad, Notepad++, any text editor of your choosing. If you prefer to get a little head start, you can have uh, Visual Studio help you out. So simply go to your, uh, go to your project, uh, right click, choose add, and then choose HTML page. And we can call this one plants.xsl, just like so, and choose OK. Uh, now, this gives me the information that you see right here. This gives me a little bit of introductory HTML formatting. I did it this way to save us a little bit of time. If you prefer, you most certainly can do this by hand in a text editor as well. I'll say my plants as the title. Now, what we want to do is we want to shake hands with each of these specimens that we have in our XML document, and we want to show them on this HTML page. Uh, so it's best to show those in a table. Now, a table is a little bit tricky, which is why I wanted to go into Visual Studio here, at least to get my document started. So I click on Toolbox, and um, oh gosh, you know what? Uh, hang on just one second. I think it doesn't know that I'm in an HTML page because it doesn't give me the HTML toolbox options. So no worries. I'll go to another page that I have that is an HTML page. Uh, and sorry, subtle difference, but the difference is simply the extension of the file. That's a clue to Visual Studio whether or not to show this HTML toolbox. So in this HTML toolbox, I have an option for a table. I'm going to drag and drop that. And I'll tell you what. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to do this all in Visual Studio anyway, but it, at this point I have a basic HTML document and I have a basic table. Now a table in HTML is something that shows us tabular data. So for example, first name, last name, Brandon Jones, Checkers Jones, that's a table. That's what we're seeing right here is a table. A table is kind of interesting because it's going to start with a table tag and it's going to end with a table tag. Within the table tag, a TR represents a new row. Uh, within a TR, you'll have a series of TDs, and those TDs represent the cells of a row. So I'm going to format this to make it a little bit easier to read, like so. And whoops, so kind of give us some, some good spacing. And this is all I needed, was a little bit of inspiration, something to get me started. I really don't need Visual Studio beyond simply making a template like this. So I control C and I'm going to place, I'm going to make a new document, Notepad++ and control V and here we go. Okay, now by the way, you might wonder what the ampersand NBSP means. That's a non-breaking space, which is simply a white space like uh, hitting the space key. That's what that's represented in HTML. Not to worry though, we don't really need that. As a matter of fact, we don't need these other rows. I'm gonna clean things up just a little bit here. So TR, uh, let's go ahead and break the TD onto its own row and we'll do the next TD onto its own row. Just pretty things up a little bit. Okay, and then one more time the TD on a new row. Okay, and finally close off the TR. Okay, so uh, title, uh, once again, we'll call this My Plants and I'm going to save, but I'm going to save this in the same directory where my plants XML file is and I'm gonna save it as plants.xsl uh, and surround it in quotes so that it ignores the save as type down here and it saves it simply as an XSL file. Note, as soon as I do that, um, as soon as I do that, Notepad++ colors it up, notices that, okay, uh, it knows what a start tag is, what an end tag is, so on and so forth. Within this document, I'll say h1 and I'll say specimens I have found, something like that, just so we know what it is. Save. Now, we want to open this up in a browser and see what it looks like. 
We, to do that, we need to know where this file lives. So one thing I really like about Notepad++ is edit, copy to clipboard, current full file path to clipboard. Now uh, I go into my browser of choice in control V and we see that it says, okay, well, this is an XML file. I'm not sure how to render it, but at least we can see that it's an XML file. Okay, fair enough. Now let's move on to the next step, which is we have to tell our XML file where to find this XSD. We need to do that little step where we marry our XML and our XSD together. To do this, we put a uh, we put a new element at the very top of the page, actually just one line down. So line number two, I'm going to paste in this element. Now, by the way, we're looking at the XML document I've built up in this video series. And so that, that hasn't changed beyond what I've done in this video series. I'm going to go ahead and paste a line that I've borrowed. Uh, so I could type that out from scratch, but I, you'll trust me that line number two, it just needs to look like this with one small modification. For the href here, I need to point to plants.xsl. And now what I'm saying is, if this XML document is viewed in a browser, I want it to be styled with this XSL document, which is the document that I'm building here, okay? So, I haven't done a whole lot just yet, but let me go ahead and copy this full file path to clipboard, and now let's go back to our browser and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so parsing an XSL, uh, XSLT style sheet failed. I think it's upset with me right now because I have not put in the bare minimum tags for our XSL document. So let's go ahead and do that. A few things I'm going to need to do. Yeah, it, I can understand why it's upset with me. First of all, I need to uh, put our XML line that we put on top of all XML documents. I need to put that up at the top. Nothing special there. That one's pretty boilerplate. You can copy and paste that from many sources. After that, I'm going to grab the root element. We said it can either be transformation or style sheet. In this case, I'm choosing style sheet. Now, note that that's an open tag. So there's no close slash at the end. So naturally, we're going to need to close that tag too. So slash XSL colon style sheet. And that will close off our tag. Okay, uh, okay. within that, I'm going to do, you know what? Uh, okay, okay, I think we're good so far. Uh, let me save, let's see if our browser's any happier right now. Not sure, maybe it will be, maybe not. Okay, still not happy, so no problem. One more thing I'm going to need to do is an XSL template match, which means, okay, within my style sheet, I'm saying, I want to start looking at this plants XML file all the way up at root, okay? So how do we know that based on XSL template match? Well, remember, if you remember from our last presentation, the value of this match attribute is essentially an X path. And if we just have this slash on an American keyboard, it's the slash on the question mark key. If we have this slash, it means start us off at the very top level of the XML document, start us off at the very root. Okay, so of course I need to close this, so slash uh, XSL and then colon template. Okay, and looking a little bit better, so we save, and now we go back, is it any, any happier yet? It is. So at this point, we have put in the bare minimum tags that we require uh, to get an XSL document. Now we're good. Now we know that our XML is valid. We know that our XSL is valid. Now we simply need to start pulling the XML into the XSL. So let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to use our, our iteration because we know that we can iterate over a collection by using a tag called XSL for each. So uh, within my, uh, right before my TR, I'm going to say XSL colon, and then we'll say uh, for each, and then select equals. Okay, this one's really important because this, uh, what I put in the quotes for that select equals is going to be an XPath expression 
that brings us to our repeating group of specimens. So we have to be really careful with this one. So, okay, uh, I need to terminate the tag. We're gonna wrap it around the TR. Remember that a TR in HTML represents a table row. So what I'm saying is I want one row for each specimen. So XSL for each and then one row for each specimen. Okay, deep breath. So what do we put in the select then? Well, how do we get down to what XPath do we use? Let's see, we'll pull up our little XPath friend here just a moment. Uh, just one moment. And we'll simply take a look at the, the, the little XPath tester that we used in the previous video to walk from plant to specimens to the individual specimen. Remember from the root, we start with a slash on the question mark key, then the root element. Okay, then we walk to its child specimens. Okay, then we walk to its child specimen. Spelled correctly, specimen. Now let's make sure that I got this right. I'll go ahead and copy it into my clipboard so I can use it later. Test XPath and what do we see? Sure enough, it shows each one of the specimens that we have created. So that's what I use in the select. I say, find me the repeating group that is at this XPath level. Plant, specimens, specimen. Now within each of these TDs, what I can do is I can reference each of the children of specimen, latitude, longitude, planted by, and comments. Uh, each one will be in its own cell, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new TD. And inside of the TD, I'm going to say, uh, we'll make a new tag. We'll say XSL colon value dash of, and then we'll say select equals. And this is kind of a relative X path relative to what we found up here. So we don't need to go all the way back to root, but we do need to know the name of these sibling elements or these, if you prefer, these great grandchild elements that we have here. Latitude, longitude, planted underscore by, and comments. So value of select, latitude, okay? And then we'll simply close that tag. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's make that a self-closing tag. That'll make things a little bit neater for us. So XSL value of, control C. Control V, we'll call this one longitude. Okay, next one, we'll call it planted by underscore by. And finally, the last one we will call comments. Okay, and save. And now let's go back and let's take a look at our browser and see what we have. Whoops, a little bit of refresh action here. And sure enough, look at this. We're looking at the data, but it is HTML formatted now, so we can treat this like an HTML page. We can add more HTML elements to it. And guess what? This is gonna sound a little bit recursive, but we can use CSS to style this page and make it look like the rest of our website. And as our plant data grows, this page will grow as well. So let's go back to our source XML document. And what the heck, let's add one more specimen. Um, so we will put this specimen, um, I'm trying to think of roughly what Australia would be, so I'll have to take uh, just a wild guess here. We'll say minus 25, and we'll just say for Australia, we'll say uh, plus 38. Again, that, that is a total, total wild guess. I'm sure I'm way off, but we'll call this one um, Dave Jones, and we'll say wonderful specimen. Okay, and I save, I go back and I refresh my page. So just hit the refresh here, and sure enough, there's our new specimen. So I change the data and our page changes as well. Just one more thing I would like to do here. This isn't very user friendly because we just have data on a page. We don't know what it is. Let me introduce to you one more uh, tag that's going to be handy for us within the table. We're going to make a special row at the top. So outside of my loop at the very top, we're going to make a special row. And instead of TD, we're going to make this TH. And that essentially means a header tag. The nice thing about that is because it is a different HTML element, we can style it differently if we wish. We can make it bold, we can make it colorful, anything like that. I'll also uh, give the table a border equals uh, one. We'll try that out, okay, and save. Okay, now within my THs, I'm going to give these titles. So we'll say latitude, 
Okay, and then, uh, whoops, need to close that guy off properly. On the next row, we'll say longitude. Okay, on the next row, we'll say planted by, but we'll make it in English-like name, not with an underscore. Okay, and on the final row, we'll simply say comments. Okay, and save. And now let's go back and take a look at what our page looks like now. A little bit better, a little more user friendly. You see that the you see the titles in bold. You also see we have it looks kind of old school, but we do have some borders around this table to define what each of the columns and the rows are. So that's a quick look at how to transform XML into uh, into another XML or into an HTML using an XSL transformation, also known as XSLT. There are a few more options you can explore. I'll let you do that on, the, on your own. This gives you quite a bit of fundamental knowledge. So I hope this has been useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.